driving up a canyon called Farmington Canyon. This is it here behind me. And I'm gonna go spend a night camping. Um, this is only, you know, 20 minutes from my house, at least the start of the canyon is. And so, uh, and it's been really hot down in the low in lower areas. So I'm heading up into the mountains to camp. I've driven this road before. I've never camped up here, but I've driven this road before and it's it's like eight or ten miles, very narrow winding road, steep drop-offs on the sides, and um, it's a pretty area up there. I'm gonna hop in the car now and keep driving. I've got my camp all set up, or at least mostly set up, and I've got to say this might be the best campsite I've ever stayed in. This is so beautiful up here. This is national forest land, free dispersed camping. Here's my car. You can see I've got the yellow hammock set up next to it, and then my little toilet privacy tent right there. For here, this is Francis Peak. It's got some uh, some antennas and stuff on top of it. This is Bountiful Peak. There's a city on the other side in the valley called Bountiful, so that's Bountiful Peak. And then over on this side is this beautiful meadow. And it is just so pretty. I love this place. This dirt road isn't even the main dirt road that goes through the area. This is a little side road. And uh, man, what a spot. It is beautiful up here. It's probably 75 degrees. It was 90 down uh, in civilization. I've never been to this part of the mountain before. I've been over to Francis Peak where those antennas were but I've never been over here, I've never camped over here, but this is only maybe an hour and 15 minutes from home, maybe 25 miles, 30 miles. There's a fire pit here. I don't have any wood, any firewood, but there is some dry wood over here. Again, there's my little toilet tent. Got more to say about that in a minute. My beautiful hammock hung up from one side on this tree and the other side from my car. And here's looking out across the meadow. I want to show you guys this. This is a new backpacking chair, a new camp chair that I got for my SUV RVing adventures. And you can see that it's pretty small, it's pretty compact. This is what it looks like. And I'll show you how it's set up. You unzip it from the case, and there are two parts. There's the fabric part, which is the actual chair that you sit on. And then this metal part, this bundle of metal pieces that is the, uh, the backbone of the chair, the legs and everything. So you undo the strap, put all of the pieces in place, and this is what you get once you've all set it up. And then the fabric has these little pockets in the corners, four pockets in each corner, or it, one pocket in each corner, four pockets total, and the pockets go over these four points.
There you go. Now this is the Walmart cheap knockoff version of a much more expensive series of camp chairs, of backpacking chairs. This is only like $15 at Walmart. The real ones cost $50, $65 in that range. This definitely isn't as lightweight as those more expensive ones, but when weight isn't a concern, like when you're car camping, it's a really great little chair. I've used it several times now, and I love just how compact it is, and it's actually very comfortable. One thing I didn't like about the chair is that there was no pocket, and so I sewed a little pocket and stuck it on with, uh, with snaps so it can easily come off and go back on. It's nice for my phone or for snacks or a book, things like that. There's one other thing that I use this chair for, and that is a toilet. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I kind of have a thing for camp toilets. I'm kind of obsessed with finding the smallest, most compact camp toilet. And the reason is that I really don't use my camp toilets very often. I usually don't spend, you know, days and weeks at a time away from civilization. So, Usually I just use gas station bathrooms, Walmart bathrooms, McDonald's bathrooms, things like that. But, you know, of course, when I am uh, in, in a campsite, in a remote campsite for more than a day, then I do have to use the toilet. And so that's why uh, I do carry a toilet, but also why I want the toilet to be as small and compact as possible. How does that relate to the Walmart camp chair? I made a toilet seat cover to go over the chair. Let me show you what I mean. So this is the toilet seat thing when uh, it's not being used. I told someone that it was about the size of a medicine bottle. You know, I can easily palm it in my hand. It's small. So it barely takes up any space in my car. Here's the fabric slash toilet seat when it's unfurled. There's a hole in the middle and then it's kind of hard to see, but there's a pocket kind of in each corner. And those pockets go over the four corner post pieces on the chair. Let me show you that. So here is the toilet. It looks like it's kind of angled forward, and it is, but when you sit on it, it this part compresses down, and so it's, it's pretty flat. And so what I do, and what I did actually when I first got here to camp, because I had to go to the bathroom, and so I used it when I first got to camp, I put a trash bag in here, kind of fold the edges over, and then sit down, do my business, fold up the bag, tie it up, and then toss it into a heavy-duty Ziploc bag. I'm kind of abnormally excited about this, but I'm, I, I'm really happy with the design. There are a couple things I need to figure out, a couple things I need to tweak, um, and I have designs for other toilets that are different from this, but um, for now, this is my camp toilet of choice, and I'm very happy with it. So there are a few purposes to this trip. First is that I just wanted to go camping. I saw a picture of this place and figured I should go check it out. Second, I wanted to test some new gear before I go on my big month-long road trip in a couple of weeks. And I'll talk more about that trip and where I plan on going in my next video. But uh, yeah, I wanted to test out 
uh, the, t the toilet seat thing for this blue chair and I did and it works great like you saw I'm really happy with it um, I've thought of a few modifications that I need to make to some other uh, gear setup things I got a new windshield mount for my fake GoPro and I wanted to test that out let me show you a few other things I made this little table that can hang from a door or from uh, from a roof rack and again I wanted to test this I'm very happy with it I might at some point sell a kit for anyone who wants to make theirs so that all they would have to do is uh, you know, drill holes in a piece of wood or or in something like this this is just a, a cutting board so I wanted to test that I wanted to test having my paper towel roll up here I attached it to uh, to the sun visor and the reason I did that is because I usually have it here but I have my cooler here right now and so um, it was a bit of a tight fit with the, with the paper towel roll there so I've put it there and I actually like it there it's pretty easy to grab stuff or to grab a piece when I'm in the driver's seat I could also have it here um, you know, I'll play around with it and see what I end up doing. These plastic bins here are new. They are long bins. They're 36 inches. Let's see, the dimensions are right here. 35 and 3 eighths inches by 16 and 3 quarters by 5 and 7 eighths. So I've got two of those. Usually when I go on long trips, I have a big, one single big black plastic bin right here. And that works very well, and it's a great bin. But I thought I would try having two different bins. These were, I think, 9 or $10 each at Walmart. Um, and I like the, the idea of having things separated, so I could put like food in one of these and then cooking gear in another one of these. I plan on doing more cooking on this upcoming trip than, than I have in the past, and so I've been buying more camp cooking equipment, and so I need a place to put it. So, uh... That's what I got those for. You can see here the bins are, are on the uh, alongside my bed area. Here's the cooler. Let's see what I have in it this time around. I've got some cherries, some yogurt. Ah! Cherries, yogurt, cheese, pickles, some... Um, granola bars with chocolate on them so that they won't melt. And then I've got canned drinks. Ow. Some fizzy water. So for dinner tonight, I'm gonna have just some cheese sandwiches. Just uh, basically bread with cheese and pickles. It might sound kind of weird, but I like them. And then for breakfast, I'll have yogurt with, uh, with granola in it. And one more thing I wanted to show in the cooler here is that I have this plastic bin on the inside. It fits perfectly in there. And it's there so that this stuff doesn't get wet from the ice. When the ice melts, I don't want all this stuff floating in water. I don't want to have to, you know, paw through water to get at my stuff, so I have this little bin, which is actually one of these bins that I just cut a few inches up all around, and then I stuck it in the cooler. There's a little rodent over here that I keep seeing. Let me see if I can show you. I don't think it's focusing. Oh, there we go. So yeah, again, this trip is kind of a shakedown trip to test the, the new things. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. I, um, you know, I've been doing this SUV camping thing for a couple of years now, and my systems are just getting more and more dialed. And, um, you know, it's exciting to, to gradually move my, myself toward that perfect setup. One thing I do still need to get is a hatchet so I can chop up firewood. Here's firewood and again here's this 
nice fire pit over here. There's this like $35 hatchet that um, that I've been looking at online and I looked at it today at Home Depot. And I think I will get it before my month long trip. I was debating whether or not I wanted to get one. And the thing that really pushed me over the edge is that uh, I heard someone say that, you know, what if you're out camping in the forest, you're on a dirt road, uh, the next morning you try to drive out and there's a tree that's fallen over the road. And I thought, you know, even a little hatchet, even if it took me eight hours all day to, to chop my way out of it, chop my way through the tree, uh, at least I'd be able to do that. Whereas if I didn't have a hatchet, I'd just have to wait for uh, an unknown amount of time until someone else came to, to help me, I guess. So I'm gonna get it mainly for that reason, but also it'll be good for chopping up firewood. What a beautiful campsite this is. This is so, so nice. Got my solar lanterns out charging. I like both of these lanterns. This one is kind of an inflatable one. It, it uh, inflates to be a, a larger bag that can light up. It's 6.18 p.m. right now. I think I'm gonna bust out the cherries. And it's gonna be, there's a lot of daylight right now at this time of year. It's just a couple of days after the, uh, the uh, summer solstice. So lots of sunlight, get dark at like 9.30 probably. Got a few hours left, gonna eat some cherries to kind of stoke my appetite a little bit and then I'll make some sandwiches and uh, just kind of relax in the hammock. All right, so it is dinner time. I have these sandwich thins. I got these instead of rolls just because they're already cut. Easy to make sandwiches with them. Got some pepper jack cheese. And then pickle slices. So I'll make two at a time here. Just put two slices of cheese on each one. And then get the pickles. I want to dry them out a little bit. Then I have some other paper towels that I will use to pat the pickles down. Is this weird? Is this a weird thing to eat? I don't know. Probably. That's it. Pickles, cheese, bread. What more you, do you need? As a sign of just how, I guess, lazy I am, I tied this piece of paracord around the tree so I can pull it to rock myself while I'm laying in the hammock without having to push off against the tree or, or the ground. Works very well. There's a little lake up at the base of the mountain up there at like, eight and a half thousand feet that uh, I'd like to go visit tomorrow on my way out of here. I don't know if I can get up there. There's a road that goes all the way up there, but it might be snowy still. I don't know. I mean, you can see there's definitely still snow up there. We'll see.
Here's my camp behind this tree over here. And here's the meadow. It's about 8.30 now and the sun has gone down behind the mountains and it's cold. It's probably in the 50s now and uh, it's only going to get colder. So I think I'm going to turn in for the night. I'm going to hop into the, the old RAV4 and just hang out there for the night and I'll see you guys in the morning.